Hello everyone, welcome to today's lecture. This is Dr. Mahinder, Faculty of Mathematics, Department of Basic Sciences and Humanities, B.V. Raj Institute of Technology, Narsapur. Today we will talk about one of the important topics in linear algebra that is eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So which is the unit two of the present mathematics course that is the linear algebra and calculus. So most of you might be well aware of the calculation behind the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. But the significance of eigenvalues and eigenvectors are not well understood. Hope after this lectures we can understand clearly this one. So particularly today's lectures I am going to cover the three important topics. The first one is the uh, what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors and its significance. The first one uh, eigenvalues. and eigenvectors and its significance the second one some of the applications i am going to cover in the alpha applications third one so how to compute uh, eigenvalues of a square matrix so mainly i'm going to focus on this lectures so what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors then the second i will move to the some of the applications related to the eigenvalues and eigenvectors the finally then we'll explain then how to compute the eigenvalues of the matrix So we will start the class with uh, by taking example. So let us consider A is a 1, 2 by 2 matrix 1, 2, 2, 1. Then I will consider one vector 1, 3. So generally what happened when the vector, the sorry, when the matrix is the vectors. So the vector gets transformed into new vectors. So I am plotting the graph for the better understanding and interpretation. So this is the unit, this is the x axis I am taking, this is the y axis. So these are units 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3. Yeah. If you multiply Ax, so what happened? Let us see that one. This is 1, 2, 2, 1. This is a matrix A. This order is 2 by 2. So the x is the order 1, 2 by 1, 1, 3. So the resulting also will get the vector, the order will get the 2 by 1. So this is what uh, so 1 1 ja 1 plus 2 3 ja 6 plus 7 will get this uh, 2 1 ja 2 then 1 3 ja 3 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. Now I can plot this vector x and ax in the graph. So now x what we have that 1 3. So next layer this is 1 x axis this is 3. Yeah. So this is the x this is x then what is the ax so after multiplying ax so the resultant we got is 7 5 so we we'll plot the 7 5 so for that we will take 1 5 this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and this is the 5 this one now just i will draw this one this is ax this is ax now so whenever we operate this matrix on the vectors so generally we can observe the two things one is change the direction and changes magnitude 
and that means it is scaled and rotated. So, we will consider another case. So, we will take so x is equal to 1 1. Now, what happened in this case? Look at this one a x. So, a is equal to this is 1 2 2 1 then x is what 1 1. So, again we will convert into the new vector that is 1 1 is the 1 then 2 1 is the 2 plus 1 plus 2 is the 3 we will get here. So, next this multiply this second row the first column we will get 2 1 is the 1 then 1 1 is the 1 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. Now, we will draw this also in the graphical for better understanding for the interpretation. So, we will take one more graph. This is the 1, 2, uh, 3, 1, 2, 3. So, first I will take the this x now, the second case of x is what 1, 1. So, this is the 1, 1, x. Then, so what is the resultant ax? ax we got 3, 3. Now, we will plot this is 3, x axis 3, x component, y component 3. So, this x and ax. Now, look at this case. So, after multiplying the x, the ax is also in the same direction. ax is also same direction, just changes the magnitude, just changes the magnitude. So, here in this scale, so in the first case, it is a scaled and rotated. But whenever the second case, whatever the direction we have, so after multiplying ax also, then a x also in the same direction, but not rotated. So, here the second case only scaled, not rotated. So, a vector that undergoes purely scaling without any multiplication of, uh, without any rotation. So, a vector that undergoes purely scaling without any rotation is known as a eigenvectors. The scaling factor is called is eigenvalues of that matrix. Here, the lambda is equal to 3 is the eigenvalue. Now, from this we can write it this one. If come on, take out the 3, so what you will get this one? 1, 1. We can write 3 times of x. Now, ax is equal to 3x. ax is equal to cx. Now, the ax is the 3 times of the, will become the 3 times of the original xx. So, we can generalize the for more generalization. Now, keep 3 is equal to lambda, then we will get ax is equal to lambda x, ax is equal to lambda x. Now, we will summarize the definition. Uh, there is x such that the resulting only scaled by a factor of lambda. So, in this case, this lambda is called eigenvalue. This x is called eigenvector of the matrix. Hope you understand the what is the significance of the uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, whenever if you operate matrix on vectors, generally changes both uh, magnitude and direction. But however, matrix may act on some vectors, but changing only magnitude. So, leaving the direction unchanged. Such vectors are called eigenvectors. The factor is called eigenvalue. Now, we will define mathematically what is the Now, we will define definition of the eigenvalue eigenvector. A non-zero vector x is said to be eigenvector of a scale matrix A. If there exists a lambda, there exists a lambda, scalar lambda such that such that Ax is equal to lambda x, Ax is equal to lambda x. So, that is a non-zero vector. non-zero vector x is said to be is said to be eigenvector of a matrix A if if there exist this symbol there exist 
a scalar lambda such that such that ax is equal to lambda x ax is equal to so this is the famous equations you come across in the many textbooks for the definition of the eigen values eigen vectors x not equal to 0 ax is equal to lambda x is called lambda is called eigen value and x is called eigen vector note where x not equal to 0 but lambda may be 0 lambda may be 0 lambda may be 0 so hope you understand the significance of the eigen values and eigen vectors so the significance is we are preserving the direction just we are changing the only magnitude now we will move to the second part of the today's topic so some of the applications so eigen values and eigen vectors are the wide range of application but here i will quote some of the applications related to the our engineering so that uh, first one is uh, PCA. The PCA is called uh, the principal component analysis. So, which is the powerful uh, technique for the reduction of dimensionality. So, in this, the concept of eigenvalues and eigenvectors used to compress the data by redu reducing its dimensionality. So, second application coming to the uh, page rank algorithm. The page rank algorithm. So, the page rank algorithm was published by the Google founder Larry Page and colleagues in 1980, yeah, sorry, 1998. So, most of you are aware the Google search. For search for anything, we are using the Google. If the, if the moment if you search anything on the Google, so it will be display the website link in order. The logic behind displaying the things of the website links is associated with the concept of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, third one, we can use the so eigenvalues and eigenvector in the construction field also. So, particularly uh, designing the bridge. So, engineers use the concept of eigenvalues and eigenvectors ensure the stability of the construction of the building or anything bridges. So, here I will give the one of the uh, example. So, the one of the known bridges collapsed due to the uh, failure of the stability of the construction. The name of the bridge is uh, uh, Takamo Narrow. The Takamo Narrow bridge, it is, was uh, built in 1940. So, it was collapsed due to the failure of the stability of the construction. Now, it is available in the YouTube also kindly watch it. The fourth one, I will give one more example for this one application. So, designing the car studio. So, in this uh, generally if you turn on the music, then we will get the vibration from the car. So, the reproduction of the vibration of the car is associated with the concept of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, not only this one, so we can use in mechanical engineering and electrical engineering for coupling, we can use in that one. And also one of the important the application is the solving the system of equations solving the system of equation this is the one of the powerful technique by using the concept of eigenvalues and eigenvectors so not only for these areas so we can apply any areas where you can observe the significance of the uh, this phenomena what is this phenomena is so wherever you need to preserve the direction and just we not we, we have to change only the magnitude in such cases you can apply this concept of eigenvalue and eigenvector, there is no limitation for applying for only the particular areas. So, like for example, uh, you can apply the image process. So, for example, you want to enlarge the image. For example, look at my face. I want to enlarge my face, for example. So, if the moment I want enlarging, so I need to change the each and every component. 
and also I need to preserve the direction also. For example, I have to increase the, my nose. So in such cases, in the image process, I need to preserve direction also. If I change the direction, only scale, so the entire the system, the image will be damaged. So like that, there is no limit. So wherever you observe this phenomena, means the significance. So, so the significance is, so we are preserving the direction, just we are changing the magnitude. So in such cases, we can apply the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Hope you understand what is the significance of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now we'll move to the, the third topic of the today's presentation is the how to compute uh, eigenvalues of a scare matrix. So for computing eigenvalues of a scare matrix, so we need to derive characteristic equation of a scare matrix. Now we will derive, so this is the basic equation for the finding eigenvalues of a matrix. Now let, we will take uh, if x is a eigenvector of a matrix A, the corresponding to, sorry, x is a eigenvector of a matrix A corresponding to eigenvalue lambda. So then by definition, then by definition, so we have Ax is equal to lambda x and x not equal to 0 and x not equal to 0. So, so this is the definition of the uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector. So, most of the student you are aware of this equation also x not equal to 0, Ax is equal to lambda x, then we uh, call, here lambda is called eigenvalue and x is called eigenvector. So, just I am bringing to the left side this one this is Ax, so minus lambda x equal to 0, okay. So just I am bringing the left side. So Ax minus lambda, so x I am replacing by Ix. So we know by multiply the multiplying the identity matrix will remain the same. So there is no effects, just I am replacing the x by this Ix, x by this Ix. So now I am taking the common this a minus lambda i of x equal to 0. So let for the calculation purpose, let you can take it this as a minus lambda i is equal to b. So therefore, the system will become bx is equal to 0. This will become the bx is equal to 0. So, suppose if uh, assume, if assume B is non-singular, if assume B is non-singular, you know what is the B is non-singular? If the B is non-singular means dead B not equal to 0 and inverse exists. Suppose if, if you assume that if the B is non-singular, let us what happen, let us see that, okay. Now B is non-singular means, so B inverse exists. So I am multiplying, pre-multiplying both sides by B inverse. So B inverse of Bx, so B inverse of this is null matrix. So we BB inverse x, so this is 0, we know the BB inverse is equal to i, ix is equal to 0, so this will BB inverse is equal to i, so the ix, ix is equal to 0, so finally we will get x is equal to 0 will get x is equal to 0, but which is the contradiction, why? By definition itself, x is non-zero, by definition itself, x is non-zero. So why this happened? Because this happened, we assumed that the b is non-singular, by we assume that b is non-singular, so we got x is equal to, x is the zero vector, so therefore, so b is non-singular. B is, which is the contradiction to the definition of the eigenvector. So, this is happened by assumed that B is non-singular. Therefore, we can conclude that B is singular. So, B is singular means what? Therefore, we conclude B is singular. B is singular. 
So B singular means what? Dead B is equal to 0. Dead B is equal to 0. So debt of A minus lambda I is equal to 0. So this is called characteristic equation of matrix A. So determinant of A minus lambda I is equal to 0 is called characteristic equation of the matrix A. The roots of this equation will determine the eigenvalues of A. Suppose if A is a 2 by 2 matrix, this characteristic equation will represent second degree equation. Suppose A is a 3 by 3 matrix, square matrix, the corresponding characteristic equation will represent third degree equation. For example, A is a square matrix of order n, the characteristic equation will represent nth degree equation. Now we will going to uh, find some eigenvalues of a matrix. So we will do, do the problem. So problem. So we will take the first problem. So we will do the two problems, one for the square matrix of order 2, another one from the square matrix of order 2. So first one, find, find eigenvalues of a matrix A equals to, A equal to 1, 4, 2, 3. So find the eigenvalues of the, it is a square matrix of order 2 by 2. So what is the characteristic equation of the matrix A? So we have the characteristic equation, debt of A minus lambda is equal to 0. We know A already, we have the 2 by 2. Then how to take the I? So I, you can take the corresponding identity matrix, your take is the I2, your take is. So by A minus I, so we know A is a 1, 4, 2, 3, I is what? 1, 0, 0, 1. So multiplying lambda, so that will become lambda 0, 0 lambda. By subtracting from A, we will get 1 minus lambda, 4, 2, 3 minus lambda equal to 0. Now we know, okay, this is how to compute the determinant of 2 by 2 matrix. Let us say the A, B, C, D. Suppose A, B, C, D. So determinant is A, D minus B, C. So by applying this formula here, 1 minus lambda, 3 minus lambda, minus 8 is equal to 0. So just simplifying this one. So 1, 3, j is 3. So this minus lambda into minus lambda is a plus lambda square. So this is minus 3 lambda minus 1 lambda. So we will get uh, minus. Uh, 4 lambda. So, minus 8 is equal to 0. So, just I am keeping order. So, lambda square then minus 4 lambda. So, 3 minus 8 is the minus 5 is equal to 0. So, this is the characteristic equation of the this uh, matrix A. Now, find the roots of the key equation. So, how to find the roots of the second degree equation? So, here for example, uh, Ax square says bx plus c is equal to 0, it is any second degree equation. In such cases, how to split into factors? Choose two numbers alpha, beta such that alpha plus beta is equal to b, the whatever the coefficient we have the b, alpha beta to equal, equal to the, the ac. Here hope here, what is the b here? Here b is equal to minus 4. What is the AC? So here B is equal to what? Here, here, here B is equal to this is the coefficient of this one uh, minus 4 and AC is equal to minus 5. Now choose two numbers such that the sum is minus 4, the sum is minus 4, the product is minus 5. So, the numbers are, so lambda plus 1, lambda minus 5. So, the numbers are 
the numbers are 1 minus 5 1 so 1 plus minus 5 is equal to minus 4 1 into minus 5 is equal to minus 5 so therefore lambda is equal to minus 1 and 5 is the eigen values of the given matrix here so we have one uh, property of the eigen values the properties of eigen values are th these are the two important uh, properties so after getting the eigen values by using this property we can check it the whether obtained eigen values are correct or not so the properties are the first one is the sum of eigen values is equals to trace of matrix this is the one of the property the second property is the summation will represent for the sum the product we can pi the product of eigen values is equal to determinant of the matrix so after getting the eigen values by using this property so we can check it whether the obtained eigen values are correct or not but then how to verify because it is a 2 by 2 matrix so the characteristic equation we have the second degree equation so it have the two roots the roots are the eigen values what are the two roots let us say here lambda 1 so lambda 1 plus lambda 2 it should be equal to the trace we know what is the trace of matrix the sum of principal diagonal element so the product of eigen values should be equal to the debt of matrix now we have the two eigen values these are the now make it sum minus 1 plus 5 is equal to 4 what is the trace of the matrix the trace of the matrix is what sum of principal diagonal elements that is equal to 1 plus 3 is equal to 4 therefore satisfying the first condition so what is the second condition the product of eigen values minus 1 times minus 5 is equal to minus 5 what is the determinant of the matrix this one so this determinant is what det a is equal to ad minus bt see 3 minus 8 is equal to minus 5 so this is equal to equal to det a so after getting the eigen values so we can check it these two properties these two properties are very powerful so after getting whether they are correct or not now because therefore these eigen values are correct why because the sum of eigen values is equal to the trace of the matrix and the product of eigen values is equal to determinant of the matrix so for this we have one shortcut formula instead of doing all this the shortcut formula is if a, a is a, if a is a 2 by 2 matrix if a is 2 by 2 matrix if a is 2 by 2 matrix so will characteristic, uh, characteristic equation will get the second degree equation so directly i am writing that one lambda square minus s1 lambda plus s2 is equal to 0 here what is the s1 s1 is the trace of a matrix what is the s2 s2 is the determinant so instead of computing by like this formula even directly if you plug in the values of s1 s2 so we will get directly this equation now we will do the same process for this shortcut formula lambda square minus what is the s1 here trace of a matrix 1 plus uh, 3 is the 4 lambda what is the s2 here determinant of the matrix minus 5 so determinant of the matrix minus 5 so so lambda square minus 4 lambda minus 5 equal to 0 so this is equal to the same as the answer we got the by using the process so better if you remember the shortcut formula for we can easily simply without simplifying this all these so directly we will get the required equation so next we will move to the uh, another problem for the so we will compute one uh, second problem uh, find eigen values of find eigen values of matrix point eigen values of the matrix a is equal to it is a 3 by 3 now the first we whatever the problems we took that is the scale matrix of order 2 now we will consider one uh, matrix of order 3 uh, 1 the first row is 1 0 minus 1 the second row 1 2 1 2 2 3 
so the order of the matrix 3 by 3 first you write the rows then after columns you write so now we have to find the for finding uh, eigen values we need to compute first the characteristic equation so the equation is what we have the characteristic equation so the characteristic equation is determinant of a minus lambda is equal to 0 but here also we have the shortcut instead of doing this formula so for 3 by 3 matrix also we have shortcut so the if a is 3 by 3 the characteristic equation will give the third degree equation so directly we have the shortcut formula for the third degree equation so that is what lambda cube minus s1 lambda square plus s2 lambda minus s3 is equal to 0 so where what is the s1 here here s1 is equal to trace of a matrix you know what is the trace the sum of the principal diagonal element s2 is uh, sum of minors of principal diagonal elements then s3 is determinant just if you compute s1 s2 s3 and substitute in this equation so we will get uh, required characteristic equation so now we will do that one then so s1 trace of matrix what is the trace of matrix the sum of principal diagonal elements so what are the 1 plus 2 plus 3 now 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6 then s2 is the sum of minors of principal diagonal elements so how to obtain the minors of an element deleting the row and the column the element which lies on that one okay for example we need to compute the minors of principal diagonal elements the principal diagonal element means the elements lies on for example matrix a11 a12 a13 then a21 a22 a23 this is a31 a32 a3 so generally we represent matrix by like this so here a11 represent the first row in the first column the a12 is a, the first row and second column so like that a13 is the first row and third column so we need to compute the minors of the principal diagonal elements so the elements lies on the principal diagonal is called principal diagonal element so a11 a22 a33 is called principal diagonal element so so we need to compute the minors of principal diagonal element so we need to write uh, find the minor of a11 so minor of a11 obtained by deleting the first column and first row so the deleting this first column and first row will get the the remaining matrix 2 by 2 matrix that debt is called as a minor okay so this is what the minor of a11 is 2 1 2 3 so the minor of a22 the minor of a22 obtained by deleting the second row and second column so now deleting second row second column so we'll get 1 minus 1 2 3 so the minor of a33 so deleting third row and third column will get uh, 1 0 1 2 so this is nothing but is the the sum of minors of principal diagonal element so this is the minor of a11 this is the minor of a22 this is the minor of a33 so this is the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix uh, 6 minus 2 4 then 3 plus 2 is a 5 2 minus 0 is 2 so it is what uh, 9 plus 2 is 11 so next uh, s3 so s3 is what determinant of a matrix so most of you are aware the how to compute a determinant of a matrix so we can compute the determinant of a matrix is sum of product of elements of any row or any column with corresponding cofactors you can compete with any row or any column so we will compete with so this is the with respect to first row for this we will plus we have the minus 
hope you will aware of these things so so first we'll compute with respect to first row so first we'll take the a11 what is the a11 one so sum of products of elements of any row first row with respect to their corresponding cofactors so what is the cofactor in element cofactor of an element is what it is deleting by so first if you know the minor minor generally the minor of element we represent by mij mij is what deleting that row will for example m11 m11 is what minor of an element a11 so deleting the element uh, a uh, first row and first column will get this one for example this here a22 and a23 this one you will get okay but cofactor of an element we represented by aij so multiplying minus 1 over to the power of i plus j mij is called cofactor so the cofactor will give only the sign if i plus j is a positive sir odd will get minus even will get the plus here 1 plus 1 we have the plus here 1 plus 2 odd number we have minus so that i am doing that one so now so hope it is clear everyone so determinant of 1 into 2 1 2 3 for second element will take the minus because of 0 it's completely become 0 yeah plus minus 1 now deleting the third column and first row 1 2 2 2 so this will have this one this is a 6 minus 2 is the 4 now this is the uh, this what it, what value is 2 minus 4 is the minus 2 the minus times minus is the plus will get 2 6 now we got s1 is equal to 6 s2 is equal to 11 s3 is equal to 6 now just substitute will get what you will get the equation uh, lambda q minus 6 lambda square plus 11 lambda minus 6 is equal to 0 so directly so we got the characteristic equation now if you find the roots of this equation so the roots nothing but the eigen values of the a matrix a then how to compute the roots of the third degree equation if second degree we can do it but whenever if the uh, equation is third degree equation if you have calculator you can type in calculator will get it but if manually how to do that so for that we have the uh, first you have to find the one root by the uh, trial and error what is the trial and error means first you substitute start with one so whether it is satisfying or not let us uh, substitute one in place of lambda this is la one cube is one minus six plus eleven minus six so we'll uh, plus twelve and minus twelve zero therefore it's satisfying therefore lambda is equal to one is the root is a root so once you get the one root then by synthetic division you can split into the second degree equation how it is let us see it here so already we got lambda is equal to one is the root then from synthetic division you can write the coefficients of this lambda cube lambda square lambda and constant so what is the lambda cube coefficient here one then lambda square is the minus six then lambda is equal to eleven last finally we have the minus six so the here keep zero and add and write it here and this multiply this two and write it here so one times one is the one then again you have to add here right is the minus five again you have to multiply one times minus five is the minus five the so six again multiply this six times one the six add zero so if you get zero means finally the process is correct so it's lambda is equal to one is a root therefore lambda minus one is a factor so this what represent this one so this represents are the one degree less coefficient of the one degree less this equation so with this represents what the coefficient of the second degree so lambda square minus phi lambda plus six equal to zero now it is a second degree equation you we know how to factorize the second degree equation here now choose two number in such a way that the sum is minus five the product is six so the numbers are the lambda minus 2 and the lambda minus 3 now lambda minus 1 is equal to 0 therefore 
lambda is equal to 1 2 3 now then how to verify that one so after getting this uh, values whether they are correct or not so for that by using that properties what is the property of that one so we have the property is we have the two properties the first property is what the sum of eigen values is equal to trace of a matrix the product of eigen values is equal to determine so we have the property if uh, because of it is a 3 by 3 matrix we will get the through three eigen values so if you make it sum that should be equal to the trace if you multiply that one that should be equal to the determinant now let us check it now this yeah so what we got here 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 sum of this one 1 2 3 so 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6 what is the trace of the matrix now trace of the matrix also 6 1 plus 2 plus 3 the first condition is verified so product of the matrix 1 times 2 times 3 times is equal to 6 is equal to 6 then what is the determinant already we computed is equal to 3 is equal to that therefore the sum of the eigenvalues equal to the trace of the matrix and also the eigenvalues the product of eigenvalues it is equal to the determinant therefore whatever the eigenvalues are got they are correct one so hope you understand just i will quickly summarize the my today's lectures so i started with the uh, concept of eigenvalues and eigenvectors the mainly i focused on what is the significance of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors the main significance is whenever if you operate the matrix on vector generally changing the both its magnitude and direction but however the matrix may act on some vectors by changing only magnitude leaving the direction unchanged so such vectors are called eigenvector the scalar is called eigenvalue so after that i quickly move to the second is the uh, the sum of the application we discussed mainly the principal component analysis the page rank algorithm and designing the bridge and also designing the car stereo and also electrical engineering and mechanical engineering and solving the system of equation not only these areas also so wherever you can observe this phenomena of the preserving the direction only changing the magnitude in such cases we can apply the this concept of eigenvalues and eigenvector the third concept what i covered we derived the characteristic equation of a scale matrix so this help you to compute the eigenvalues of a matrix so what is the characteristic equation of the matrix is determinant of a minus lambda is equal to 0 is the characteristic equation of the scale matrix the roots of this equation will give the determinant so after that we did one problem for 2 by 2 matrix we taken we computed the eigenvalues so in second one we have taken the 3 by 3 matrix scale matrix and we computed eigenvalues and also i given the shortcut formulas for the uh, for the 2 by 2 matrix and 3 by 3 matrix and after that also after getting the eigenvalues then how to check it whether they obtains values are correct or not so for that you can use the two properties the properties are the sum of eigenvalues equal to the trace of the matrix the products of eigenvalues is equal to determine if these two conditions satisfied so then we conclude that that eigenvalues are correct now i am ending the session thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates